Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine. I'm glad you don't want my job. The average life of finance ministers is two years. It's been calculated. I thought about how to grab your attention today. We've just sitting here, I've learned so much. And I decided there are two things. One is I have to transport you from all these cold Arctic things you've been looking at to a very warm, fuzzy continent. The second is that I don't have any props like my first TED talk, so you actually have to look at me. Now, I, I'm just going to update you on a TED talk I gave in 2007, which was talking about the other Africa of business opportunities. My talk is on Africa reality or hype, Africa rising, reality or hype. Let me go back first to the 80s and 90s and the image of Africa that everyone had and still has to a large extent, which is an Africa of conflict, an Africa of disease, an Africa of lost economic opportunities, an Africa of aid, an Africa declining economically where nothing is happening. That's the picture that everyone had, and that was the true picture. But the policymakers on the African continent learned a lot of lessons from what happened in the 80s and 90s. And in the 2000s, launched a series of reforms that designed to bring the continent back up on its feet. And I'm here to just update you and say that a lot of changes have happened since a lot of these reforms were put in place. First of all, on the continent, most countries are now democracies and have gone through one or two cycles of elections. Conflicts are down, and the economic indicators are looking up. And that's where this Africa rising phenomenon came out of. Let's look at debt. We used to have a, a debt as a percent of our gross domestic product of 100% or more in most countries. Today it's 32%, which is better than what you have in the US and Europe and most other places. Thanks to the good work that was done in forgiving Africa's debt in the early, in the 2000s. Let's look at inflation. We had an inflation rate on average on the continent of about 48%. And now we are down to about 6%. And growth that used to be less than 2% is now about 5.5. And the IMF is even forecasting 6%. Foreign direct investment has gone from $9 billion in the year 2000 to $50 billion today. And it's doubled the amount of aid going on the continent. 50% of our people, of our urban people in our urban areas now have access to the internet. And internet use has gone from 4 million people in 2000 to 167 million today, thanks to the mobile phone. So that is what is happening. My country, Nigeria, is a good example of this. Uh, we've been growing at about 7% per annum for the past decade. A third of our young people have access to the internet, internet commerce, and other modern things that you take for granted are really taking hold on this continent. So I just want to say that there's a reality to what is happening and that opportunities, that the continent is a continent of opportunity. One third of the population are now classified as middle class by the African Development Bank and investors are realizing this. In fact, I want to say that the boat of investment and opportunity is leaving for the continent and those investors who don't join now and wise up to this will be left behind. But let us just also look. So this is, these are all the opportunities, but the high part of it that I want to caution is that there are also challenges. What are these challenges? We have the challenge of inadequate infrastructure, be it air, uh, uh, for connectivity by air within the continent, ports, roads, rail, and power, most of all. Inadequate infrastructure. We have rising inequality with our growth has come inequality so that the well-off people are the ones who are get, getting most of the gains and we have people who are increasingly being excluded. We have the challenge of unemployment. Up to a third of our, people, of our young people in most of our countries are unemployed and if we don't solve that problem by improving the quality of growth, it would come to haunt us in the next five to ten years. So these are the challenges that we see. But we can also look at these challenges as opportunities. If there's inadequate infrastructure, what does it mean? It means there's room for the private sector to invest and to partner with government to improve this. If we have rising unemployment, what does it mean? It means we need to look at the quality of those sectors where we invest. We need to diversify our economies so that we can get people working in agriculture, in the housing sector, even in the creative arts. 
These are uh, the opportunities that we see. And so I want to just tell you that where you see a challenge, inequality, it means we have to improve our tax system so that we can redistribute to those at the bottom end of the ladder and make sure they're included. So for me, even those challenges represent opportunities for the continent. And I'm here to invite you to say, join us, work with us. Work with us to take advantage of all the opportunities to ensure that Africa remains a continent that can contribute to this world and continues rising with the reality of the world. Thank you.